Good evening ladies and gentlemen, Best in Slot here and tonight I'm going to give you guys some dinosaur news that hopefully we'll be done with in under 5 minutes. This is why I'm single. So, for decades people believed dinosaurs to be nothing but slow and lumbering beasts. Unintelligent, dim-witted, cold-blooded, my mother-in-law. These days we n I don't have a mother-in-law. These were days we know that is rubbish for most dinosaurs anyway. And recent discoveries such as coloured pigmentation in dinosaur eggs have suggested behaviours that would have seemed ludicrous only 20 to 30 years ago. And if you want to watch a video on that, I'll link that down below. Adding a little more to that recently, a group of researchers from the University of Bristol and a paleo artist named Robert Nichols have put forward a paper describing the interesting coloration on a dinosaur called <clears throat> Sinosauropteryx primer. First a little background on this guy. Sinosauropteryx is an early Cretaceous consignathid that would have lived in what we now know as China and it was a newer relative of the famous Comsognathus, the dinosaur in Lost World Jurassic Park that tore that one Swedish dude to shreds. And its name, Primer, is a reference to the fact it was the first non-avian dinosaur ever discovered with feathers. This small dinosaur likely used its varied colouring and feather patterns primarily to confuse predators, and as well as the banding on the tail, there's clear evidence of what we call countershading. Now this countershading is a process where the, the top portion of a creature, i.e. the bit hit by the sun, is darker in coloration, and the shadowed and lower region of the creature is lighter. And what this does is it kind of flattens the creature and makes it stick out less in its environment. This is really common in animals today, both for hunting and for evasion of predators. And it's especially common in open environments where there's a lot of sunlight and shadow. We've discussed countershading in dinosaurs before though. The bandit mask is something new. You can see this brown, dark coloration around the eyes. And it's fairly adorable. This is something of course seen in many animals today. The raccoon is the most obvious example, but it's incredibly common in a number of different birds as well. And following that correlation is what makes this quite an exciting discovery. There is the obvious benefit of this dark coloration being good for blending into an environment, helping the creature hide at night or in the foliage. But with raccoons in particular, it's used as a distinguishing marker amongst friends and families and what have you. Perhaps these little dinosaurs did the same thing and could identify each other based on the way each band was uniquely designed. And the dark band also helps reduce glare around the eyes, something helpful for raccoons with their nighttime hunting and also the reason some athletes use black paint under their eyes during games. If you think of people like American footballers, they've often got swathes of black paint on their sort of upper cheekbones. And it's not to look cool and threatening, no, it's to reduce glare from, say, spotlights. It helps them keep their eye on the ball. Now, that's probably not why Sinusauropteryx had it, but maybe it helped them keep their eye on their prey when they were hunting in bright sunlight. Pigmentation and coloration seem on the face of them like relatively unimportant topics, but much about modern animal behavior has been deduced by the unique way all these creatures use color. And as we gather more and more evidence on dinosaur coloration, something we've really only started to do in the last few years, it's only going to open up new avenues of analysis for our favourite group of creatures. If you like this video, folks, please do hit that like button down below. Remember to subscribe for more dinosaur news. I'm going to try to do these kind of quick shot little videos, but if you want to know more, if you want to get in depth, I'm going to link both a article about it down below and the original research paper as well that you can read through for yourselves. Thank you so much for joining me. As per usual, cheers, much love as always. Bye-bye.